very much and um, uh, thank you for the nice welcoming and thank you for helping with technical problems. My name is not Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy is next to me at that, at that point and I have the pleasure to introduce um, us, actually the three of us, and um, uh, the project we want to talk about. Um, we are, and maybe I try to switch to the next slide. I just click on that. Yep. That's the problem when you're not alone, when you're on a different computer. Who we are? We are three women who are working internationally on the future um, of teaching and learning in different settings. Um, my name is Eva Chandon. I'm from the Fernuniversität in Hagen and I'm professor there for university continuing education and um, teaching and learning. My colleague Dorothy, whom you can't see at the moment, she's uh, working with me together on that. So just a quick look. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Mbine Makwa uh, is our colleague from South Africa who works with us on this project um, at the Institute for Open Distance Learning uh, at the University of South Africa. So these are the three of us. And what we would like to do with you is um, actually uh, in a first step to tell us what combines us or where we work together. We are all connected in a University of the Future network, how we call it. This is a network that is an informal network founded in 2016. Uh, in this network, there are academics and researchers from around the globe, not only from Europe, but also from the other continents. And well, the purpose that unifies us or that makes us work together is um, that we want to develop policies and strategies for the transformation of higher education institutions. So our topic is how could universities of the future look like? And the second step is how can we get there? So we want to, um, the goal is so to think about how can we make university fit for the future and future oriented. Well, when we go on to the next slide. So um, what we did do is <clears throat> we, we discussed within our network and then we made also short research um, study that we want to share with you or the results we want to share with you. We, um, COVID-19 made main, many changes to the way we could think about the future. We talked about the future of universities and the future of teacher and learning before, but with COVID-19 things changed. And um, what we figured out at our institution maybe, um, and you share with us, I'm sure about that, is, well, that COVID-19 impacts directly to higher education. So from one day to the other, we had distance learning, even if we were not distance learning universities. And the thing that is also important is that we need to think how we can, can have a sustained business continuity, continue, con, continuity of education within this phase, which, which actually will not stop now and which goes on in the different countries we are in. And, but what we also can see, there is a, there is a tendency to look at short-term solutions. So there is not a vision of what would, will be after what, what will the changes be in higher education? What is something that we can really, um, uh, what we can really take care of and what, what could change within our institutions? So I think the focus in this sense should be on the future developments on higher education and not only how can we deal with COVID-19 at our institutions, how can we deal with it in our teaching and learning? And with that, I switch to my colleague. Thank you very much, Eva. Welcome, everybody. Um, a hello from me. A very, in very short time to give enough time for discussion, I give a short introduction on what we did to give a quick response in that disrupted time, a quick, a quick scientific response to that, and um, introduce some results very short. So. What we did is like we did some um, focus group discussions. We um, did them in the context of the UNESCO Futures of Education Initiative, which is quite interesting. It's a UNESCO initiative that is dealing with future, new future visions for teaching and learning, in, no, for education in general, sorry. 
And the University Future Network decided that we want to, re to contribute with revisions on teaching and learning in higher education. And that's specific, specifically, specifically to higher education connected to the University of the Future. And we, um, the initiative aims at reimagining how knowledge and learning can shape the future of humanity and the planet. That's a very global um, goal. And um, the focus was set from the initiative, which we hand over a bit, was that knowledge production, access and governance, as well as citizenship and participation issues. That is like outlined by the Future of Education initiative, and we decided to hand it over to our research. And in the next step, I just give you a short introduction on what we found, I found out through the focus groups. So we asked for visionary paths that can be seen and key challenges um, and opportunities opportunities that are related to it. And um, in the in terms of visionary parts, um, the experts said that in future, edu um, higher education or teaching and learning higher education is um, likely to be planned and online. That means that campuses will still continue and remain important, but online strategies will be much more integrated. Um, that there will be more personalized learning by offering flexible learning opportunities that means uh, more customizing um, of teaching and offering multiple programs for multiple or diverse students. And that flexible movement of students as well as lecturers and supporting professional collaboration is key to opening up higher education. And related opportunities are, which can be seen right now, is that the crisis can be seen as accelerator for digital change. as every higher education institution or education at all had to move online very quickly. And um, there's an opportunity to create an aspired future, to create new visions, as Eva introduced, to, um, and to rethink the purpose of higher education and to transform education system in general. Mm -hmm. and, and related challenges, which are some of them are quite obvious um, right now, is a concern of the capability of students to move online and also of the capability of teachers um, and their online teaching skills, as well as infrastructural bar barriers that ICT technology is very different in countries all over the world, and that there might be resistance to change that undermine progress. This was very much related to leadership, as um, which is seen as very critical um, to drive innovation. And um, another thing is like uh, the um, uh, students expectations and engagement which was quite interesting that some students are very happy with going online and with remote learning but others may ne not want to change or may not remain in that situation so this needs um, very much attention when rethinking learning processes and to ask how can i make my students to actively engage um, for for learning um, that was very quickly and maybe another very crucial point um, I want to introduce is like we asked, we also asked for um, conditions for accessibility and inclusive, inclusivity in higher education. And what was, what was brought to the thought was that bridging digital divide is um, very important because the digital divide now manifests in, in different types of inequalities. Might it be access to internet, to devices, living in an urban or rural area, um, and um, it's important to foster social justice by including students' different ways of learning. That also means not relying too much on the possibilities of students, but taking into account the differences in their, um, that's very much related to customize of the teaching and learning processes and different, uh, offering different modes of delivery and thus supporting online autonomous learning and to diversify higher education, that means that um, to allow students to, yeah, to change uh, between higher education institutions and more easily, that also means to allow higher education institutions better to exchange or to implement exchange programs and also to, um, to, to make it easier to, to the recogni recognition of prior learning for universities. So that's to sum up um, our results. So now I would like to um, hand over to Ampine, who introduces some conclusions, and then um, we go into discussion for the last okay. 12 minutes, I think. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dorothy and Eva, for, for the discussion that we just had right now. Um, as as um, Dorothy had said about the conditions that we want, we also talked about visioning because as we're talking about the future, we also have to come up with a vision, a clear vision of where we want things to be. And social challenges that we have right now, how do we address them in order for higher education to be resilient for the future? So that was one of the things that we needed to work with. And social ch challenges also have to do with the social justice mandate of equality, of equity, of inclusivity, of accessibility. And also, I mean, recently, the other issue that is very, very prominent is the digital accessibility, uh, whether people have access to digital um, infrastructure, but not only the infrastructure and connectivity, but also the knowledge, the know-how to use the, 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 the digitalization. So as we are thinking about that, how do we address the social challenges in order to prepare the university for the future? The second point is the alternative ways of teaching. So that, that again, is quite an important component of, 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 of the study of, of, of what we need that needs to be done. We understand teaching in a certain way, but as as we look into the future, there'll be online, there will be a blended form of learning, there will be um, a personalized way of teaching. So teaching in a digital era is completely different from teaching in what we are used to. So we need to begin to think about that alternative ways of assessment. How do we assess for online teaching and online learning? How do we deal with things uh, differently. So all those things are coming up to that. So so again, the quality of teaching and learning, the new normal versus the, the normal, what do we mean by that? And the political will, what are the institutions willing to do in order for them to change and in order for them to be relevant in the future? So political win is the institution, is the uh, policies that needs to be in place, all those things. So the other in, in conclusion, we said higher education, therefore, need to, to, to address those issues. Higher education need to embrace open education principles to meet social justice mandate. The mandate of, of, of inclusivity, accessibility, um, um, making sure that there's parity of, 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 of um, access to everything that we need. Because you may have documents and you may have a, a digital devices, but if you people do not have access in terms of, of, of education, then it's another thing. So there's digital literacy skills and all the things that needs to do. And as higher education, there is no way that we cannot survive without adopting blended learning approaches to ensure accessibility, to, to, go, to go fully online or in any other form. And the third part is to address inequalities. And, and to do that is to, to, to ensure that students now have the power to choose what they want. They have the power to we, they have a power to personalize the type of learning. And we have the micro-credentialing that is coming up where people want to come in for lifelong learning for 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 um to use what they already have a uh, prior learning and uh, to to develop what they want for a particular area so maybe the the issue of of learning a program that is three or four years now we are going to be learning short learning programs that addresses a specific need for an individual uh, for an individual and after that, then the, the, the person gets a credit for whatever that they are doing. So micro-credentialing is going to be the thing of the future, and that will assist in personalization of learning. And then um, we need also to work towards addressing the digital divides that we see were so rampant towards uh, they were so rampant in the in the in the COVID-19, what COVID-19 has brought to us. And and finally, transformation needs political will to plan for the future. So this political will is not only nationally, it's 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 um from UNESCO. 
UNESCO, then national, then uh, institutional, even the mindset of individuals who are working in the, in the institution should have a mindset of thinking differently about the work that they have been doing. So I think finally, we have a few questions uh, that, that will lead to a discussion so that you can help us as we move forward with this study. Uh, question one is the discussion will be on what is your experience related to teaching and learning in higher education given the impact of COVID-19 and it's it's you can tell us about that what is your future vision at your institution and what is needed for sustainable vision of teaching and learning in higher education I think those will be left so that you can be able to chat with us you can send it through uh, the chat or you can uh, talk to uh, discuss to discuss with us we are desperate and looking for as much information and as much discussion to stimulate uh, this this discussion on revisioning the future of higher education thank you very much colleagues for listening